Trooper Anthony Staria runs hot for a high-speed chase. Driver, let me see your hands. Put your hands out the window. Then Howie Peterson heads deep into avalanche country for a search and rescue. Here we go. It's not clear if the guy is alive or dead. I see him. I see him. A horrific stabbing sends Trooper Blake Calhoun into action. He tried to gut me. I'm about to die. Advise him that hey. he just went unconscious. And when illegal booze floods the streets, ready? Troopers must go undercover to bring down the smugglers. Hey, troopers, open the door. Open the door. I'm not going to go away. There's no running from Alaska's finest. Hold on, boys. Step on out of the vehicle. You need to come with us. Twenty fifty-two, ten thirty-six. Did you find anything? There's not much. There's three little flakes. God, I don't even see them. <laughs> I bet not. They're pretty small. You think that's going to pay for your gas money? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just something to do. The big gold rush, huh? For Howie Peterson, pulling over amateur gold prospectors is just part of the job in Alaska. Part of the reason why I wanted to become a cop, I wanted to work in Girdwood. The mountains are spectacular, and I grew up running up and down this highway, kind of out away from everything. I think it's the best that Alaska has to offer. You can see some pretty neat stuff out here. But this breathtaking scenery on the Kenai Peninsula can also be a death trap. We're going into Hope. A couple of snow machiners found a body in Palmer Creek, in the creek. 52, go ahead. And I'm just getting more from dispatch right now. 152 is the completed city that came upon him, not conscious, not breathing. And it's just a single party, you think? I know there's no radio or cell reception back in that area. That's kind of an unusual place to ride. You know, usually there's a partner that rides out. Maybe there was a partner and there's something's happened to him too. I, it's kind of unknown at this point. As more information trickles in, the call takes an urgent turn. Did they have contact with the individual? Sounds like this was uh, some kind of a snow machine accident. They complain that he doesn't have much information. He just got told to ride out and get some help. So I should probably get there as soon as possible. Affirmative. Hold on, boys. 2035-2031, Things changed. And they said that it's not clear if the guy is alive or dead. It's weird, huh? I mean, I thought we had a body, and now this may turn into something else, like maybe someone needs help. I'm just trying to get there. It's a long ways away. Now I have 16 miles of Curry Road. The call originated in the Palmer Creek Valley, deep in Alaska's rugged terrain. It's 10 miles down the trail, if we can get there. Sergeant Swifel's coming up with some snow machines, and the plan is to go meet the complainant at the trailhead, and then we'll probably go back there and see what we can find. As nightfall nears, they frantically set out into the Alaskan backwoods. These things off. Peterson spots another snow machiner. 
coached in a buddy of yours? Uh, I know him, yeah, yeah. He wasn't in our group riding, no, but uh, when his friends came up and got it and said who it was, yeah, I know. I, Is it you know, a back or a neck? It's a back injury. Okay. He jumped, landed hard, you know, he's just right. coverage? Here I do, back there we do not. Do me a favor, I don't have my radio okay. coverage. Call my dispatch center, okay. tell them that the troopers are requesting life med okay. to respond and we'll get them coordinates as soon as we can. Right on, I'll call them right now. With serious injuries confirmed, troopers know they're racing the clock. How you doing? I'm hurt. I landed him just too far out. Do you need anything right now? Anything. No. How's your legs? Got it. Numb. It went numb instantly. Probably caught a lot of air. It looks like he was probably 60 feet airborne when he landed and uh, hurt his back. Uh, turns out I know the guy. Uh, usually that's the case, it seems like, uh, in this, this area. 149-32.32. I need to get those coordinates out. You know, no cell coverage. They need a helicopter, but the steep mountain walls block cell and radio reception. Higher ground is their only chance. Hey, what did he say for GPS coordinates? Who wrote that down? You got it? We're going to go up this mountain and try and get radio. In a last ditch effort, Peterson heads up the steep slope of an avalanche prone hillside to try to get reception. This is a bad slider. but he returns with bad news. No helo. We have no contact. And with hypothermia likely setting in, the man can't wait much longer. We gotta get out of this valley. It's gonna get cold real soon. Can I do like a backward? If you wanna get one, that would be good. They must sled the man out. We'll start on that. I've never snow machined anyone that far, not 12 miles. Yeah, yeah, I hear the bird. I can't see anything. the valley for an hour, medics luckily stumble upon them. We didn't have GPS coordinates for them, and the helicopter was just told to fly back to that valley and look for us. I'm a flight paramedic. What's going on, man? Um, I think I broke my lower back. Pain on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst pain you can imagine, 0 being none at all. Right now, I'm at like a 6, but when they rolled me over, it was like a 10. Ready? 1, 2, 3. Yep, that's going to hurt. Oh, we, we need to come oh. down a little bit. Oh, 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 knees. There we go. Oh, oh, knees. 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 It's nice, you know, that we're not out here sticking a body in a bag. They fly him the 50 miles north to the nearest hospital in Anchorage. Riding's over this season. I know that's not going to stop him from doing it again next year. north in the Matsu Valley. Right now we're kind of in between Big Lake and Wasilla. 
this area we like to visit quite often. It's kind of a back road that people sneak down when they've been drinking or doing other things. Trooper Anthony Storia's routine patrol suddenly ramps up. It's a Cadillac Escalade, black SUV. I clocked him at 80. Going down Hollywood. We're just taking the curves going towards Big Lake Road. It's failed to yield. A couple more curves and then straight into Big Lake. I'm at 100 now with catching it somewhat. Or at 110. What's hitting the brakes might be stopping. Mag on 42, we're pulling over. Driver, let me see your hands. Put your hands out the window. Step on out of the vehicle. Keep your hands in the air. Turn around, face away from me. Keep your hands in the air, walk back towards me slowly. Backwards towards me, backwards. Keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. Stop right there, take a knee. Cross your legs. Cover me, there's one more in the car. It's my wife. Instant reaction is probably somebody who's been drinking, especially this time of day. And uh, brand new Cadillac Escalade is not something you normally see run from you. Why'd you take off on us, man? What, what's going on? We're just heading home. Have you uh, been doing a little drinking tonight? I mean, you saw that trooper turn on his lights. He had his lights way on in front of you, and then you bolt. I saw you for 60. That's how fast you were going when I, when I turned my lights on, 16 to 45. Then you had a couple of drinks tonight. I heard him ask him, how did you take off like that? I just I don't have a good answer. Trooper Ostai administers field sobriety tests, while Staria tries to get an explanation. Did, did he say anything to you when he was taken off? No. I don't know. I was on the phone. I don't think he even realized that... He, he knew we were behind him. He saw me with my lights on, and he bolted by me at 80, 85 miles an hour. And then taking the curves at that rate of speed, he knew we were behind him. Seven six. You are going to get a misdemeanor citation. You're going to get a citation for speeding. Yep. You're going to get a misdemeanor eluding citation from me right now. You're taking off on us, you're trying to lose us. And you're lucky because at the speed you were going, he could arrest you for a felony. All right. Point oh seven six. Well, another quarter of a beer could have put him over. Ross, I decided to issue a misdemeanor citation based on lack of criminal history with us. So uh, he's not going to jail. He'll have to show up in court later on. I turned that first curve and he was gone. He wasn't around the curves. So I was like, oh, we got to step it up. <laughs> it's negative 40 in Fairbanks, where Trooper Heather Riddle patrols the streets. I am the only female trooper on patrol. Being a female trooper is a lot different than what it is for the men. It's almost like there's these different set of standards that you have to meet. Most people don't expect a five-foot trooper to come knock on their door, and that's going to be the person that takes them to jail. What happened here today? But you just have to have command presence. You have to go in there, and they have to know that while you're in that room, it's your room. Tonight, she's on high alert for drivers making the already slick road conditions even deadlier. Drinking and driving in Alaska is a very big problem. Whenever somebody is out drinking on these roads, it just makes it that much more dangerous. We just had a 911 call for a 1050. The female driver of one of the vehicles was possibly intoxicated. 10 
Fairbanks just transferred to us on NBC. NBC is a motor vehicle collision. And injuries are still unknown. How you doing? What happened here today? Uh, she was on the right hand side of the road. Mm -hmm. I was trying to go to the left uh -huh. and uh, squeak by her as I was sliding and he hit me. Into and... her. Okay. So you guys were still in the parking lot here when it happened? Yeah, it was right here. Okay. Ma'am, can you go have a seat in your vehicle? I'll be with you in just yes, a minute. Yes, Thank you. The insurance. Registration. And uh, I'm sorry, now that she's walked away for a minute, can you give me your version of what happened? Um, she came from the west side and kind of spun around and was going real fast. She slid on her brakes real hard and I slid right into her. Okay, I'll be right back with you, all right? Okay, ma'am, do you have your license registration? Shut! I'm sorry, honey, I'm being pulled over. I'll give you a call back in a minute. Get in the back. How much have you had to drink today? I have had one beer. Please. You can be honest with me. I can just tell by the way you're talking, you've had more than one. I've had one beer. One beer? Gonna stick with that? Okay. We get lied to all the time. I would say people are lying to us more than they're telling us the truth. Are you on any medications? I was put on Uh-huh. I was allergic to and the doctor put me on Why would they put you on if you're allergic to mm -hmm. that's a A lot of the people who are drinking, they're not able to hide it that well. So they can lie all they want, but it's not going to have any bearing on what I'm going to do with the case. What I want you to do is I want you to stand right here, okay? I want you to take nine heel-to-toe steps down. I'm going to have you do a short turn, take nine heel-to-toe steps back. Okay, heel-to-toe, okay? Count out loud. The problem with being a drunk driver is most of the time, it's pretty obvious. If you're going to lift one foot, it doesn't matter which foot, approximately six inches off the ground, I want you to point your toe, and I want you to count out loud 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and I'll tell you when to stop. Okay, go ahead and start, okay? You know what? We're not going to do this. Right now, we're going to put you under arrest for DUI, okay? Go ahead, put your hands behind your back. Oh my God. Yep. Do you think it's okay if we called to come and pick him up and pick up the car? Okay. Watch your head when you're getting in. The State Troopers is my favorite show, and I got to be the one on it. Back south in the Matsu Valley. Units, I'm getting a report on 911. Male suspect left if they were in a dark city, light pants and long hair. NCIC won't be 29. He's reporting the suspect stabbed the male. sounds like a guy was arguing with one of his roommates. The guy started getting belligerent and the roommate got stabbed in his stomach. Won't be 29, you want me to go after the suspect? Copy their suspect, please go quick. Bring it, maybe I have 21 to 19. Where's Kevin? The thing about these cabins is we have experience with all these people, homicides, attempted murders, some rapes. Someone pulled a knife on me before. Get some, get some towels. He's yeah, he's cut really good right here. Oh God, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. How big was the knife? It was one of those big old kitchen knives. We got a stab wound about two inches long in his stomach, pretty big one on his leg, and another one on his calf. You tried to gut me. Dude, I'm about to die. You're not gonna die, okay? I see him. I see you. Be okay, buddy. Stay with this. Backup arrives, and they scramble to ID the armed suspect as the victim fades. He pointed him out when I came out of my cabin. 
Where did he go? He was riding his bicycle down okay. this way. Ah! It so bad. All we hear is the witnesses hear him screaming. They come out, he's standing on the porch yelling, I've been stabbed, I've been stabbed. The guy runs inside of his house to go call 911 to get some paper towels. He comes out, he's already laying there on the ground. He doesn't even know who stabbed him. He doesn't know who stabbed him. <laughs> I see. No. Keep breathing for me, okay? <laughs> Medics are still 20 minutes away. Stay calm, okay? Hey, sir? That's sir? Hey. Hey, sir? Hey. Come on. Wait, come, come on. on. Stay awake. Stay awake, okay? Advise him to hey. get this one unconscious. With a potential homicide on their hands, troopers rush to find their suspect. I got a lot of blood droplets and stuff on a garbage can that's over there. But the complex is a maze of unsecured cabins. The potentially armed and violent man could be hiding behind any door. Hey, trooper, come out. Who else is in there? Come out. Yeah, go channel one. Go channel one. Units, I'm getting a report that the suspect that did the stabbing is in cabin. Come on, so flood on top and the green right in front of it. Hey, trooper, come on out. Barricaded suspects are some of the most dangerous troopers can face. They're prepared to rush the cabin when a call comes in from dispatch. Mouth. Troopers find the weapon nearby. We're going to wait for our investigative unit to get here. We're treating this like attempted homicide. The suspect came back with a bloody knife, and as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty damning evidence. How are you feeling? Dude. I'm about to die. You're not gonna You're die. Not Medic, we're gonna take care of you, okay? You're doing good, bud. The victim was stabbed four times and is considered lucky. It sounds like a guy didn't like another guy, went back to the cabin with a big knife. Our victim started getting belligerent, who he doesn't like, and the guy stabbed him several times. He's got a deep stab wound into his into his stomach and then a couple stabs in his left leg. So it doesn't sound like he's gonna lose his life. I'm left. Sir, you're a good man. Thank you. You're my best friend. On the other side of the valley... I don't know what to believe. It's been crazy today. It's Friday the 13th. It could be superstition. It could be snows melting and people are finally coming out of the house. But all hell is broken loose. 1B10, 1B42, we have 121 reporting. She's been beating them up. They're both 1056. Oh, it's going to be one of those days. Husband and wife in an argument. Wife assaulted husband. Don't know much more than that. We were just at the resident a couple hours ago. I've been in some bad houses that was right up towards the top. The place we're going to is pretty much trooper unfriendly. A third of assaults on officers occurred during domestic disturbances, making them one of the most dangerous calls troopers can get. Now I know there's guns in this residence. Staria's driving the faster Dodge Charger, so the other trooper lets him pass. 
soon as I get the opportunity, I'll go buy it. Twenty nine forty two, did you drive up the driver walk? I drove. I was able to make it back. Ugh. Well, there goes my pretty clean car. Hey, how's it going, sir? What's going on? She did one of these. Wow! You don't have women, dude. Stop what? me right here. Are you afraid of her? I'm not wanting her to go to jail. You don't want her to go to jail? Yeah. You just want her to calm down? I want her to sober up and mm -hmm. stop drinking that heart. Where's she at? You gonna kill me? Why would I kill you? What's going on between you and your husband? This badger called. He's concerned about you, so I don't know why you're calling him names. Every time you come here, you are the instigator. I didn't. No, I didn't. No, yeah, didn't. you are. You're just going to the hospital. You're not going to jail. Wait a minute. You guys don't have a right to take me. I haven't done anything. I have not done. Stop looking at you. You're a danger to yourself. No, I am and you're not. a danger to other people. No, I am you're not. not. I like shoes. I like those shoes. <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on, you can walk. We're not skiing here. Oh, this is kind of fun, isn't it? <laughs> Run open the door, I got her help. I am not going. You have to. I am not going. I am, I am not going. No, bro. Don't me hurt you. Okay. Don't make me. Ow. Please. Ow. Oh. Watch Shut it. Way. So uh, she's on her way to the hospital for a uh, Title 47 hold. She's a danger to herself and to her husband. Uh, we've been out there multiple times before. It won't be the last time we go out to that residence. It was a mess. But not all troopers work the streets. In the wilderness, the specialized Alaska wildlife troopers protect the state's abundant natural resources. There's only a certain number of us any given day can put us in another part of the state at any point in time. You know, I've been all over the state from the North Slope up by Prudhoe Bay to out west in Bristol Bay to down south doing the fisheries down by Sitka. It's, every day is a different challenge and it's a different environment. Today, Ben Spronson's patrol takes him outside Fairbanks to a wilderness area of almost 800 square miles. We are going to go down to an area called the Mental Flats. There's a winter moose hunt going on, and we're going to go in on the ground and see if we can contact some hunters. Nobody has the size that Alaska has. Just by the aspect of how big our wilderness areas are, I can be 400 miles away from civilization. It's a whole different category of risk. Oh yeah, we got some guys. Everybody has a gun, they all know how to use it. Most of them are fairly decent marksmen. There are a few individuals who don't think the government should be involved in it. We know them, we watch out for them. We understand the risks when we contact them. With the amount of hunters in such a vast patrol area and temperatures hovering around five degrees, one trooper can't do it alone. So Trooper Bump will assist from the air. He's gonna fly around the area, uh, spot the hunters, spot the moose, spot any kill sites for us, and then lead us in by radio communication to those hunters. on top but it's still thawed underneath this is the liver the lungs the esophagus the intestines 
Ben Spronson wants to make sure hunters took the moose legally. It's a huge major violation. I look at it personally as they're stealing from the rest of the citizens of Alaska. It's a type of theft. Bump follows the hunter's tracks from the air. Those hunters are right down here. As soon as you get around that bend and the sleuth can take a right, they'll be right on your left. guys you're doing some hunting my dad's in a tent sleeping he's got a permit and i've got one we hear a lot of rifles going off we heard someone shoot back this way the hunters check out but in the sky something catches trooper bump's attention i see some kind of movement down here can't tell if it's a snow machine or what it is yet two people on uh, snow machines both got a gun got something in their sled. Man, it doesn't look like there's a whole moose there. Failure to salvage all the meat is a crime called wanton waste, Alaska's most serious wildlife offense. Is it back the way you came from? They're probably two miles ahead of you right now. Yeah, I highly doubt I'd be able to catch up to them. Yeah, okay. With Van Spronson out of range, Bump heads to cut them off. Gotta stop and check on them. That would be a good spot, but they're going to be by it by the time that I get in there. There's nowhere to land over here. And it's just not worth the risk. Having an idea where they came from, but we're going to look around a little bit and see if we can find a kill site from that moose that we just saw on the cart. That's it right there. problem with landing right here is these are the bad sections of the river. There's some holes in the ice. Definitely the same moose that we saw in the trailer. At the first pass, it sure didn't look like they had the whole thing in there, but there's no problem here. Hopefully, just as people see in the airplane and knowing we're out here, we'll keep them honest. Back on Fairbanks' frozen streets. Ice fog's currently setting in. Which is basically, it's getting so cold that it's freezing all the humidity in the air. This won't stop here. Morning, sir. Hey, Sergeant Reed with the Alaska State Troopers, the reason why I stopped you yes, sir. is because you started to make a turn off there, and then it looks like you changed your mind. Do you have any guns, weapons? Uh, ain't crazy, man. Can I see your ID then? And also for your other passengers, please. You don't have an ID on you? What's your name? What's his name? What's your name? What's your name? What is it? Have I met you before? Are you like a cage fighter or something up here? Okay. <laughs> all right. Let me check this out real quick and stuff, and then I'm going to get your guys' name, all right? Yes, sir. All right, hold tight. Most of the time when a person tells me that they don't have an ID card and they just give me their name and date of birth, it makes me a little leery of why they don't have an ID. 2729 out of Alaska. First name and last name. 
an individual has multiple warrants, in most cases, they already know that they have the warrants. It's a good possibility that they'll try to flee the scene or some type of fight will ensue. You can focus. Look at the handcuffs from back to front. 10 Let's get him pinned in there so he can't just pop out and run on him. We'll secure him like ASAP. Since 27 said he's a runner. Yes, sir. Hey, do me a favor. Step out. You step out, come to the front. What's your date of birth? All right, go ahead and step out. So, so you know I have any other trooper right here, okay? Turn around. Turn around. Did you know you had a warrant for your arrest? Okay, you got two actually. See, I know I recognized him from somewhere else. We got in a fight with him before. That's why I asked him if he was a cage fighter. Into Reedon's night is just getting started. Ambient air temperature outside is a negative 40 degrees, 72 degrees below freezing. And uh, we're going to conduct, I call it like popsicle patrol, where people are walking from a bar to their house. They don't realize it because of the level of alcohol that they have in their bodies that they're freezing. Units in the area of the university and airport. There is a small white pickup truck. It is VIP on that access road. It's occupied. It's The biggest danger that we have when the temperature starts getting uh, this cold is when people break down and are not provided with any type of heat source. I mean, it can become a medical emergency quickly. Ace 23, one vehicle. Yeah. Starting to read with the state troopers. What's going on? She asked me if I could pull her out, so I'm trying to have a chain or something. Oh, well. No, well, let me find out who she is. Where are you coming from? I was going to get food with my boyfriend. He was driving. Yeah. He was driving, huh? Yeah. Um, he was just to say, uh, I'm not here anymore. No, he's not, he's not here anymore? What's his name? <laughs> what? You don't know his last name? No. Uh, no? Hold tight. Normally, it's pretty easy to tell, for the most part, when somebody's being deceptive with their answers. She's saying her boyfriend was driving, but she doesn't know his last name. Uh, we're going to do a little bit more digging on this. Hey, real quick. How many people were here when you got here? Just her. Just her. She was sitting there crying. When you drove up, did you see anybody walking away from the vehicle? All right, sister, so I'm sure we've done some of the Bureau of Highway Patrol. Um, how much alcohol have you had to drink tonight? Eleven. Eleven? It's two thirty in the morning. I can smell a strong odor on your breath. What I'd like you to do is follow the tip of my finger. Look at the tip of my finger and not at my hand. With your hands down by your side, you're gonna touch heel to toe, counting out loud on each step. Do me a favor, make a good seal around the end of this tube and blow. The girl is underage, so any amount of alcohol in her system is illegal when driving. But troopers still have no proof she was behind the wheel. Just when it seems they've hit a dead end. Who are you? Her boyfriend shows up. I was working. She the car. Okay. Get your hand behind your back. Investigation revealed that she was the driver. My She was a minor consumer when operating a motor vehicle, so she was cited and released to another party for that. Oh. 
Across the state in Kotzebue, the root of most crime here in Arctic Alaska is one thing, alcohol. Its high demand has created a lucrative black market. But troopers have an undercover agent in place to help infiltrate the illegal trade. His face is hidden to protect his identity. Alcohol is the leading cause of sexual abuse, domestic violence, burglary, thefts. All our crimes, the sole source is alcohol. Today, the undercover has a lead on a pair of suspected bootleggers 150 miles east of Kotzebue. We have a husband and wife team that without arrest warrants on from bootlegging. They tried to sneak in 96 bottles of alcohol from Fairbanks. Street value is approximately $14,400. A lot of our villagers don't have public safety officers stationed in them, so they try a free raid and when the plane lands, they get all the alcohol to the villagers. On the ground, the undercover meets up with village public safety officer Otis Rolls. How you doing, buddy? How you doing? I'm doing good. Actually good. Man, it's cooler out here than it was during cops. Don't want it warm. Three people are out with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They head to his office, where it's Otis's job to keep the peace in this town of under 300 residents. I've never pepper sprayed anybody because my jail doesn't have any water. I enjoy all the people around here. and You get to know them, and then you have to arrest them. We don't have any problem if there's no booze in town. With no flight out until the next day, they wait until early morning to go after their suspects. Tonight we're going to prep our gear and everything else for tomorrow. We're going to gather our intel, make sure everybody's living where we think they're living at. In the morning, we get a higher probability they're not out gathering wood, they're not out trapping, fishing, hunting, stuff like that. Early the next day, Times of the essence, we gotta get moving. Ready? Yeah. Let's roll. Say, troopers, open the door. Oh, what do you want? I got a rest warm. Oh, hold on. Open the door. Open the door, we're not gonna go away. Hold on, I'm opening it. There are any weapons on you, do you? Open the door, there's nobody by the door but me. Don't pass, don't push. I won't. Okay. I got it. How you doing? State troopers. Okay, just, just go inside. They immediately locate the suspected male bootlegger. All right, yeah, can you have somebody bring them up for you? But can't find the female suspect. Um, here? She went to the hospital. In Cotsview? Yeah, in Cotsview. Okay. Yeah, can I look around to make sure that, that she's not here? No, she's not okay. here. She's okay. I'm in the hospital. Okay, I'm going to go check around, okay? She's nowhere to be found. Hey, man, turn around. How those feel good? Man, you gotta think of your kids before you do this stuff. I never do you know? nothing. I'm not gonna argue with, with you about this now. Okay. We always tell them that, you know, it's definitely, it's not worth it. 
they might make a little bit of money here and there, but just with the, the rate of alcohol abuse and everything else like that. Do you have a seat in the sled? In the village, you know, getting their family in trouble and just, you know, the the things that happen, it's definitely just, it's not worth it. Love you, bud. I love you. Now they must turn their attention to tracking down his female accomplice. We found out that his wife is in cots abuse somewhere. I want to see if the troopers can start looking for her so we can get her into custody. The undercover investigator rushes back to Kotzebue, where troopers already have a lead. She's over one of the airlines. We're going to head over there now. The undercover guy is going to meet us here at the airport. And we're going to see if we can locate her. They find her inside. Howdy. Hi. Well, we picked him up this morning. You need to come with us. A search of her bag turns up suspicious materials. What are you doing with the sugar? Are you going to make home with this? You want to hear it first? You guys are going to drink that, are you? That's like really bad for you. I don't know if you guys drink anything else besides that. With ingredients for homemade booze, aerosol cans, and the warrant for bootlegging, the woman lands in cuffs. She could face four years in prison. Well, now that we have um, the people that we're looking for, we're going to take them down to Cosby over to the holding facility. Um, they'll go to our Ravens this afternoon, and then they'll uh, get transported to Gnome's Anvil Mount Correctional Center um, tonight. Hey man, thanks for being cooperative. It makes it a lot easier on both of us when you're not trying to fight. It's always unfortunate when you gotta arrest the dad in front of his kids. So when they're bringing all this alcohol to the community, they don't think of what they're actually doing. It actually hurts more than just themselves. It's just bad for the whole family when things like this happen.